I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer for Gold Derby, and I'm joined today by Eric Koritz, uh, who is now Emmy nominated for his work as cinematographer on Ozark's fourth and final season. First off, congratulations on your career first nomination, Eric. How did you hear about the news? Uh, I was actually uh, on set with no internet, and so <laughs> I found out a couple hours later. <laughs> But uh, it, it was uh, over text, basically, when all the text started coming in, so. The, the, uh, usual, the usual yeah. experience, right? But uh, I guess a few hours later, and you know, you're one of 13 nominations uh, for Ozark this year, so just a lot of love uh, all around, which is always nice to see. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we'll get into your episode submission in just a second, but I would actually like to start at the beginning since you boarded the show halfway into its final season. And I know yeah. that you had some conversations with Sean Kim who shot most of part one uh, before getting started. So what was most important to the two of you when it came to how this final chapter of the show should look and feel like? Yeah, uh, we we had extensive conversations beforehand, and I, I should say that it, it was it was divided into part one and part two uh, of the season. So there was a, a season break in between, um, and um, you know we we really we just really talked a lot about filmmaking and 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 how Ozark sort of does it differently from from other places and that other shows, and that they really allow the directors and the cinematographers to um, they don't put any rules on it except for you know the the sort of the Ozark look in terms of the contrast, um, but that's really subjective and um, it's just really about what works for the story and how to make it how to bring that bring it out of the characters and and how the cinematography is symbiotic with with the storytelling. Um, you know, Ozark developed. Uh, uh, Ozark gives a lot of resources towards the cinematography in terms of the grippage. Um, you know, we always have two, um, you know, we have two lols, which are, you know, 20 by blacks to take out the light um, and sort of shape it on our own. So we really focus on the cinematography and use that as a major tool in telling the story. Um, and, and were you able to see some locked in episodes from part one before starting on part two, or was there only raw footage available at that point? Yeah, so that, that was great because they had already shot uh, you know, seven or when I come on, came on, they had shot six of the episodes. Mm. I'm sorry, five of the episodes. So I was able to see how it was done. Uh, and of course I was, a, it was my favorite show before I came on to it. So I was familiar with the look. Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities between season three and season four. Um, and we just sort of, you know, enhanced what Armando and Ben had done in season three um, and um, just continued on that look. Um, you know, keep it contrasty and there's no sun in Ozark. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. And then you basically came in and shot episodes eight, nine, 10, and the series finale of which you chose the finale titled A Hard Way to Go to right. submit for Emmy consideration. So how did you make that decision? Um, you know, it, it, it's a hard choice because it, it's hard for me to look objectively at, at my cinematography and think which, which will work, but, um, you know, it's, it is the finale, it's the closing of Ozark, um, and Jason Bateman directed it and it, it seemed, it seemed the right choice, um, to sort of close everything out. So, yeah. Um, Absolutely. And I would actually like to discuss some scenes in more detail, starting with, you know, Camila confronting the birds and Claire at the fundraiser, because yeah. you have this great interplay between, you know, the warm yellow that their faces are lit with and the background that is mostly dark, but also right. displays some of the, you know, uh, vivid lights from the fundraiser. So uh, yeah. talk a bit about uh, what you were going for with that specific color palette. Sure. Yeah. Um, and you notice sort of as as that scene goes on, it's sort of uh devolves and the the warm light sort of fades away not in that that part of the scene in particular but as it towards the end when they get up on stage and it's really just this blue cold light and they're no longer in that that warm sort of light anymore so there was sort of a an idea that there was maybe some hope before that scene started and they were gonna break free and sort of and sort of you know get away but there's this underlying blue light that's up light that keeps coming through and and um you know the beginning of that scene when they're talking at the dinner table it's it's very it's warm um and so you think and you it sort of you're not sure where it's going to go and then it just completely devolves into what could be the end of everything so um that was a fun scene to shoot of course you know it's nighttime and we we had a finite amount of time to shoot it so 
um, you know, we're always shooting with two cameras when we can. Um, and I just thought this sort of warm light overhead that's sort of enveloping all of them, and they kind of go in and out of the shadows as they're leaning back and forth, I think would told a lot about what was happening there. So uh, it was a fun scene to shoot. Those actors are all incredible. And just watching them work was like, amazing in itself. Yeah, I can imagine it's such a good scene in general. I mean, just the tensions, uh, tension and the reactions that Jason Bateman, who directed the episode, as you said, uh, yeah. was able to capture. It's just really fascinating. And uh, the moment, you know, uh, something happens in that scene, um, it, it's kind of a stomach twister, isn't it? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even and, while watching them do it, it was it was a stomach twister. <laughs> And you know, that leads us right to Ruth's death scene, uh, in which again, we have this contrast between uh, the light and the darkness, uh, since Ruth is in the spotlight and Camila literally comes out of the darkness uh, or out of the shadows. So why did you choose to light the scene that way? Yeah, I mean, the, we still wanted this sort of soft glow on 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 her, this on, um, on Ruth just to, and then when we're overhead on her, it's still it's still there on her. And Camilla's mostly sort of backlit in sort of you know mysterious, dangerous shadows. But you know, Ruth the whole time has that glow on her. I just wanted to end end in that way and just sort of send her off as we're sort of rising above her. Um, and co coincidentally, that was actually the last scene we shot of the entire uh, series. So that was uh, you know it was. A hard scene to shoot emotionally because obviously you know you don't want to see her die as a character um so yeah it, it was an incredible scene yeah um we ended i think at six in the morning the, ne the next morning or something like that, but... <laughs> wow the emotions must have been high at that point uh, yeah it's, it's such a, a devastating scene to watch obviously um, yeah and is. Had you had you had, had uh, conversations with the costume department beforehand? Because that contrast between Ruth's uh, white drape dress and Camila's uh, black dress is, uh, dress is quite striking. Yeah, and that one of one of the things we talked about. I mean, she, she's such a great costume designer. Is is and that that goes with sort of the angelic sort of. I mean, obviously she's no angel, but like, you know that that angelic soul in some way sort of sending her off. Um, and I think that normally, I, as a cinematographer, I would you know, say no white, please. Um, <laughs> but we talked about it and I thought, okay, actually this would be great for her character in this scene because it, it sort of, it, it sends her off in the right way, I think. It um, absolutely does. It's not expected, I would say, but I, I really yeah. liked uh, just that entire scene in general and how she went out uh, as sad as it may have been. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, and it, was sad. <laughs> it, it really is, but you know, it, it's realistic and that's, I think the most important uh, part. Yeah. Uh, at the end and yeah. you know then there's the final scene in which there's so much to unpack but I want to start with how challenging it was to pull off that oneer you know especially the part when the camera pulls out of the bird's house uh, and then yeah. sort of reveals that Mel is watching them uh, from outside how difficult was that uh well it took a lot of pre-planning um Jason um rightfully so wanted to pull out through the window and not use CGI glass so it's actual glass um that the camera is pulling through and then so we had to have the correct measurements have to figure out how to cut the glass properly um and then figure out the right equipment you know we had a techno crane but it was figuring out the right head and what uh what sort of accessories had to come off of it to actually pull it through that glass so um, just like anything in filmmaking, you plan and you plan, and then it doesn't turn out exactly how you want it. So you have to amend things, and we were able to amend things on the fly and figure out how to really get it through. And I think it's such a strong shot. J Jason was very emphatic about getting it all in that one that one take, and rightfully so, it worked really well. Sort of to drawing you through the house and out. It's it's a metaphor and uh, in physical um, reality and how how we shot it. I think it works really well. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And then that final shot of that, you know, wonder where we see Mel outside where he's again, a silhouette. And then you have the like cold light of the kitchen and the warmer light uh, of the uh, dining room. I thought that was a really striking shot as well. Um, yeah, thanks. The color contrast, I think, was important there. And then they the, when the birds come out into that light in itself, um, yeah. you know, it, it sort of wraps it all up. Um, 
and you know the actual ending uh is really about the birds getting away with something and getting their own way yet again while there's also this sense that it's just a temporary a temporary solution uh, to their problems so how did you go about conveying that thematic undertone with lighting with framing etc in those final few frames right yeah well i think the the, the line that says it all uh, and Chris Mundy is such an incredible writer is oh, when, he, when he says you can't you're not the Kennedys you, you can't get away with it and she says well why not like that's you know as if that's how it's always always been done really <laughs> the bad guys getting away with everything so um, I mean it was it, it was really easy it's it's sort of the you know the the warm light coming from the house and they're sort of drawn away from that and then the cool moonlight sort of um, you know backlighting them and edging them you know pulling them away from that and um you know, you just you it's just about framing and lining up and, and getting those color contrasts right. And, and I think it's that warm and cool just tells a lot about what's going on in the story too. sort of the future and the past and everything mixed up together. So, um, you know, it's just planning it out. You know, we're very we had very detailed, you know, shot lists and, mm -hmm. and pre planning. And, um, you know, I love how it ends personally, but, uh, you know, I know it's divided with some people, but <laughs> it is. But, you know, a, a lot of people I've spoken to from the show, including Chris Mundy, he said, you know, the fact that there is discussion at all um, is also quite uh, valuable because yes. the fact that people are discussing it all says that they care about it. And I think, uh, you know, it'll go down as one of those series finales that is ambiguous, but uh, uh, talked about. And I think uh, that sure. must be great as well, having worked on it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, incredible. Absolutely. And, you know, I do want to talk about some of your other episodes, uh, starting with the eighth, uh, The Cousin of Death, which is yeah. this meditative, Ruth-centric episode that kind of breaks from the show's usual style. So what did you want to bring to this episode and to the familiar setting of Chicago that felt a little bit different? Right. Yeah, well, for one, we knew it was going to break from the style. Um, it's it's written very differently. Mm -hmm. um, it's really Ruth's, Ruth's journey. Um, so for one, we wanted uh, all the car work to feel sort of visceral and real. Um, so, you know, a lot of process trailer type of stuff, uh, sorry, not process trailer, car mount sort of things, um, and really be in there with Ruth as she's going on on that journey. Um, and then again, in, in that episode, there's more color than you would see in, in some episodes when she gets to Chicago. And that was sort of in some ways representing like the possibilities of what her future could be if she, you know, if she chose a different path, which, as you know, she doesn't. Um, so, um, you know, and, and um, it, the contrast is still there, but, but the colors and, ha and the sort of camera movement. And then when, it, when it comes to the scene when she actually shoots Javi, where it's just still, it's like you're watching a, a play in some respects. And I think that's what that moment deserved because it's so impactful. You don't really need to dress it up with movement or, 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 or angles. You just let it play out and he just drops. And I, I thought that was a really um, powerful choice. Um, Amanda did an incredible job directing that episode. So, mm -hmm. uh, and other episodes too, but that one. It's a very good one. And, you know, let's actually talk about Javi's uh, death sequence, which is really well done and interesting because he's basically a silhouette again throughout the entire thing, uh, while the spotlight is more on the birds and to a lesser extent on Claire. So what was the creative idea behind contrasting those characters like that? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Javi is dying, but it's really, it's really the birds and the birds moment when they're watching that happen and their life just suddenly is, is changing entirely, you know, like that's, that's, they basically, they think it's the end for them when they, when they see, see that. So, uh, and then, and then after that moment, we go into Ruth and we're inside her head right. back to her again, because that, I think most of that episode is about Ruth until, until that moment when she gets when she pops Javi and then you're, you're, you realize, oh shit, the birds are fucked basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> excuse me. So, uh, you know, so, um, you know, that was, that was the idea behind that. And, you know, what I also really liked about this episode is that it also features some of Ruth's visions and hallucinations and memories, et cetera. Um, yeah. Was there an intention to make those visually distinctive or how did you approach those? Yeah. I mean, it, it was, it, we because it was her memories you know being ozark we didn't want it to make it saccharine but still have some light to it um where it's you know it's a hap those are happy memories for her 
Uh, and to contrast with the, you know, really the reality and darkness of what's going on with her and the current situation, I think was important. So, um, you know, but, uh, and and especially the scene when we, she's remembering her family again and going back to yeah. that and sort of flowing through, you know, the camera movement to be flowing and as if her memory is just sort of soaring, taking her and soaring her back through that, that whole thing. Um, so it, there's slight contrast, but it's Ozark contrast because it's it's still a shit world. <laughs> it, it it certainly is. You know, I also love those visions of her shooting uh, the birds and Javi uh, respectively because you know for the first few seconds you're like, is this real? Uh, right. But then you quickly notice that it isn't. And uh, I don't know. I felt uh, this entire episode. I really liked that it just focused on her thoughts and on her psyche. Um, yeah. And those visions really added to it. Yeah, it was nice being in her head and, and being able to explore that and just having these quick pops of, of oh, oh shit, did that actually happen and to right. sort of jar the audience and then come back to reality. Um, Cause you know, we all have those moments, right? We, do. <laughs> we, we certainly do. <laughs> and on a final note, um, I do briefly want to touch on episode 10 as well, because I read that the flashback sequence with our dearly departed Ben played by Tom yeah. Pelfrey, uh, was one of the most difficult ones for you to work on. So why was that? I mean, well, for one, beside that, he's such an incredible actor. I mean, as you can see from his nomination, he was in it for just five minutes, but yeah. he's nominated deservedly so, and he should have been last time as well. Um, but um, it was it was it was difficult just in the sense that it um, you know we had to exactly make it feel like it was a continuation of previous seasons episode, you know, um, um, so we're matching right. lighting to some degree, um, but also make it our own and make it feel like a, you know, feel like the current season and the current scene scene. So I, I tr it was a, just a fine line of blending last season's um, episode that he, when he comes out of the, the diner into what is what we're doing now. Um, and it was also hard because we love that character so much. So, so, Killing Ben was, you know, very emotionally difficult. Um, so, um, and I think there was some question in the audience's mind as to if he was still alive or not. And, and answering that was, you know, emotionally challenging. <laughs> I can imagine. I also read that you had to promise some of your family members that uh, he was still alive or <laughs> yeah. something. That... Well, my, uh, my mom, unfortunately, kept saying, now nah, I think Ben's alive, so make sure you don't kill him. And you know, I, of course, lied to her and said, of course he's alive. <laughs> that's so, that, that's that incredible. Made it difficult as well. <laughs> oh, I, I she's, can imagine. She's forgiven me since then, but uh, she has. That's, yeah. that's yeah. good. Well, you know, when I watched it, I thought those first scenes, uh, you know, when he walk when he's in the diner and then walks out of it, I thought those that was unused footage from season three. So I okay. job well done, I would say. Um, Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Eric, uh, congratulations again on your Emmy nomination. And thank you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to Gold Derby today. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.